Hey everyone, so this week we're going to get the chance to create our very own artificial intelligence generated artworks. Uh, so clearly the artist collective like Obvious, they are dealing with creating their own algorithms, creating their programs in order to kind of effect and maximize the efficiency of their outputs. But there are really good tools that exist out there for beginners to use that you don't have to know any coding or anything about computers whatsoever. Um, and in fact, the one that we're going to be using today is a GAN. We, we talked about what that, what that term means, a generative adversarial network. Um, this is a GAN that is called GoGAN, like the, uh, the famous artist. Um, but if you know how to use Microsoft Paint or a tool like that, you're going to be fine. You're going to be able to kind of generate your own images this way. So uh, follow the link that I provided below and pull it up. And once you're in, you're going to see it's a pretty easy to understand interface. On the left hand side, we have kind of our painting panel. This is where you're going to be making all of your changes. You can see that there is a paintbrush, a paint bucket, an eyedropper tool, undo tool, and a square shape tool. Uh, and to the left of that, there are different categories like buildings. Um, under buildings, there's a number of uh, options that you can choose. Uh, there's things like ground, landscape, and plants. So we will kind of walk through and see what each of those does here in a little bit. Um, but over on the right side, we just have a blank panel. It's just white right now. And this is going to be our preview or our output area. Um, so right now, we just see there's two areas of color kind of painted in here. This kind of seafoam blue at the top, and then this more muted blue at the bottom. So if we click the arrow in between our two panels, that's our generate button, our output button. And let's just see what happens. Oh, it will remind you uh, that we need to check a box down here in the red stripe uh, just to make sure it works. So now it should work. Might take a minute. Click again, just see, and there we go. It's a really simple, kind of boring, flat seascape scene. Um, you know, that, that just kind of demonstrates just your first initial output. So let's just go ahead and start having fun with this. Let's paint something um, of our own. Um, let's say we don't want uh, a seascape scene, we want something that's a landscape. So let's just go and look for landscape or plant. Actually, yeah, I want to pick uh, grass, and I'm going to pick my paint bucket tool. And every, everywhere down here where there was water, ocean, I'm going to paint it in uh, to grass. And we'll regenerate by clicking that little arrow button. And hopefully it works here pretty soon. Sometimes it takes a minute. There we go. Uh, again, it's just a really kind of generative pattern. You can kind of see the graininess of the artificial intelligence is doing here. Uh, but the more that you affect this panel, the more unique it's going to look and, and maybe even the more realistic. So let's just keep working with this. Um, Let's say uh, landscape. Uh, maybe I want a mountain in the background. Um, so again, I can pick my brush size up here. Let's maybe just start smaller and we'll see what that looks like. But I can paint in uh, a mountain range maybe here in the background. Um, draw a little baseline down. And now I can get my paint bucket tool and just fill in those spaces even. Uh, I might have some kind of funky ones here that I'll need to get my paintbrush back out with, uh, but it's not going to be a big deal. We'll just go ahead and get this, set our size up a little bit more. So it is just, if you've ever played with Microsoft Paint, it is just kind of as complicated as that. Um, but let's go ahead and click and we'll see what my mountain looks like. Give it a second to generate, and there we go. Kind of an interesting, kind of funky looking mountain. Obviously it's not the most uh, um, you know, convincing, maybe these jagged parts here, kind of throwing it off. So let me get my eyedropper tool. I'm going to pick the sky and just kind of paint a uh, sky texture over this little peak here. Maybe make it a little bit more flat lined um, and we'll see what happens with that. There we go. Um, wait for a second for it to generate. I think that's that looks pretty good. Um, let's say we want to add some other things in here, maybe in the landscape we want water. Maybe in the foreground there's like kind of a nice pond. Um, so let me just go grab the water texture and let me paint this in as well. Uh, again, I can just grab my paint bucket once I got the boundaries set and that's going to uh, kind of fill in the rest. Let me just sharpen it up by grabbing the grass texture color again uh, and just kind of making the, the coastline of this water feature a little bit more organic looking. So let's paint. Uh, click that and see what it did to generate. 
There, it's looking pretty nice. Uh, maybe landscape, we want some clouds in the sky, right? That would look, look nice. So even if I just paint like I think straight lines, uh, we can see what that does. Um, there you go. So it's kind of got this nice kind of uh, stratus cloud. I think that's stratus. Somebody knows their clouds, they can correct me. Um, but so again, we can do other things. Uh, plant. Trees are real, a little hard to use. I've found them kind of finicky. It doesn't always do the right thing. I found that some people say that if you draw a tree like kind of as a lollipop, um, it knows to generate something in that capacity. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Um, the other way to do it, I'll show you in a second, is to kind of just paint in tree lines, uh, meaning like, you know, kind of use them off in the distance to, to suggest trees. There you go. You see like that tree ends up looking a little funky. Uh, I wonder if maybe even, you know, generally speaking, when we see trees, uh, oops, let me undo that. Um, I think it only lets you undo one step. So that is something that's a little, uh, you know, inconvenient about this. But if I paint this in, bring my trunk down here, maybe it needs just a thicker trunk. We'll see what happens with that. That looks a, a little bit better, right? I mean, it's, it kind of looks like it has cactus arms, but it looks okay. Uh, as I mentioned, you can also do kind of just painting in tree lines, maybe like down at the foothills of the mountain, uh, there's kind of a wooded area that you might expect seeing there. Um, so maybe I'll just paint that in and we'll see what that does. There you go. Um, that looks pretty neat, actually. Uh, you know, other things that we can add, uh, grass and flowers. Maybe we'll put some flowers up here, kind of at the, the middle ground, kind of leading up to this water pond or river or whatever it is. There you go. That's kind of neat. Got some nice little blue flowers there now. Um, what else can we do? There's also buildings. I find these super unpredictable to use. Uh, you know, like me can maybe try and draw on a fence and see what happens here. Um, let me go back to building, fence, and maybe there's just like a kind of a fence that runs along this line here. Let's just see what that what that does. Yeah, you know, I don't really love it. Um, we can take it away. Um, so again, you can experiment with these. Uh, they all do different things. As we can see, the output is still really primitive. I don't think any of us would be fooled into thinking this is a, a real image. Um, but what the, the software is doing is trying to fool the computer itself into thinking this is. By making each one, each iteration, every time this is used, the results get more realistic. So uh, it also does, I meant to mention, um, some kind of fun responsive things. So like if I just pick snow as a texture and I paint snow like anywhere down here, it's going to change the whole scene to a winter scene because um, it knows snow means we're going to use whites and these grays. Uh, but I can back this off. Another th cool thing that you can do is set different custom styles. So I've got my landscape here. Uh, but you can see below it has a number of images with different kind of color schemes. Um, we can pick any one of those just by clicking it, and you can see it applies. It takes our image, but it applies kind of the style of that. We call that your, your style filter. Um, and so you can play around with these as well um, to create interesting effects. Um, you can also, if you're trying to recreate a painting or a picture that you've got, um, you can upload that photo as its own uh, custom style filter and use that as well. Um, so as you can see, it's really just pretty intuitive to use. It's just a couple you know, things clicking around. Um, there's a lot of experimenting you can do with just what's available with these materials. Um, uh, and so what you want to do once you're finished, uh, just to be sure to save your image out, is just to click this little save button here. So you can um, kind of, you can download either of these. So you can download your color map um, and you can download uh, the final image as well. So to do that, we would just click this. Uh, you'll have to click allow, and there we go. It downloaded, uh, and we're good to go. So um, your mission is going to be uh, to play around with this a little bit this week. Uh, read below for your actual parameters for this assignment. But otherwise, I hope you have fun playing around with artificial intelligence uh, for this week's project.